Hey guys, this is the Balkan Architect and this will be part 5 of the series in which I show you how to model Le Corbusier's famous Villa Savoie in Revit. So if you haven't seen any of the previous tutorials, I suggest you check out the description of this video. I have left all the links over there. Okay, so let's continue on with this. Now first, this little step over here is annoying me quite a bit, so I'm going to change that. So just go to Edit Profile just hit cancel here and then you can just use the pick lines tool to create one line like this and one like that and then just by using the trim and extend you trim and extend everything in place and do the same thing on this wall over here so we kinda have a flush side on top here so just pick lines catch this, this as well, and then just trim and extend everything in place. Okay, so when that's completed, we have all these columns over here that are kinda going unnecessarily through this wall, so I'm just going to select all of them and do the same thing on this side. And I'm just going to attach them to this here plane, and do the same thing for well, this column over here, yeah, that's it. So just go attach top base, select this thing, just hit escape over here, and there you go. So we don't have that annoying column sticking out over here. Okay, this one didn't go, so attach top base. Okay, now it happened. Okay, so now let's continue on and let's do the most complicated thing probably, the ramp. This building is quite famous for having a continual ramp that goes all the way from the ground level to the top garden. So I'm going to model it and I'm going to start off in ground level. And first thing I like to do is I like to do this middle part. So between the first and the second ramp we have this normal kind of mid-level over here. And to, do, and to basically model it you need to first go to any elevation so you can basically just check out the heights so level 1 or floor level is at 3.2 meters so that means the little in the in between part will be at 1.6 and in order to see that part we need to change the view range a bit so I'm going to type in VR to change the view range and the cut plane I'll make it cut at 1.7 so we can see that little middle part so I'm just going to hit apply and OK. And now let's just create a floor. Use a rectangle tool. So I'm just going to start off from here and finish. Well, let's finish over here. And for the height offset, I'm going to type in 1.6. Hit apply, OK. And here we have this is finished. Now again, I'm going to go to architecture tab, floor and I'm going to be using this rectangle tool so I'm going to start from over here and I'm going to end it over here and now for the slope I'm going to be using this slope arrow and I'm going to model it like this and now I can select this arrow and here for the basically this level at tail I'm going to leave it at default and for level at at head I'm also going to leave it at default but first for level at tail I'm going to put the offset at 0 and for this here at head I'm going to put the offset at 1.6 I'm going to hit apply OK and now we have this ramp which for some reason it's being cut let's go to edit boundary again height at tail Let's just put in ground level over here on both of these. Go apply, OK. Yeah, now it looks right. And now what you can do, you can just use the mirror tool, so just double M and mirror it around this here axis. And then you can go into edit boundary and you can just change the direction of this arrow like so. And here I'm going to go 
from 1.6 and here I'm going to type in 3.2 and go apply OK and there you go now if we go into 3D you can probably see it here here we have our ramp let's just turn on wireframe to see it okay so we have this ramp and we don't really want to model it all over again so we can just duplicate it once and to do so just go here to copy to clipboard and paste to align to selected levels and I'm just going to choose the floor level and go OK and as you can see it kinda duplicated itself and I'm going to go here back into hidden line view and now we have our ramp going all the way to the top and here we can just okay it's not really aligning here perfectly so we can edit boundary and you can just use the align tool to align to this here so just go there align and do the same thing up here so just go edit boundary align align to that and for this one as well edit boundary align and there you go no and for this column over here it's kinda in the air so we can just go attach top base and attach it to this here now continuing on we need to close this hole up because so, this is basically a hole in a house and if we turn on the shadows it maybe it will appear better so to close this part over here I'm just going to select this wall and go to edit profile just hit close here and then just by using a pick lines tool you can create one line like this and then just using the trim and extend you can trim it like so and like so over here so now that hole is all fixed up now we have this one here and this one here and to fix those up you need to go to floor level so here we are and we need to go to wall tool and here we have our curtain wall storefront now I'm just going to go to edit duplicate it and call it storefront number three go OK and here I'm just going to change up this a bit a little bit so for the vertical grid I'm going to make it a lot larger so I'm going to go with five meters and for the horizontal grid or horizontal spacing I'm going to go to something a lot smaller like 0.4 go OK and now let's just create this you don't have to go all the way so just go like that and same thing over here now let's go into 3D so that looks kinda like this because this is basically how the windows looked like in the Villa Savoie or look like so just go to edit profile and now we need to adapt this profile to this ramp we have over here so I'm just going to go here to pick lines I'm going to pick this line and this line and now I'm just going to delete all of this or we don't really need to delete it over here we need to trim it just like so and trim it over here so we just don't need this part so once everything's trimmed just go finish go delete elements and there you go so we've kinda plugged this hole so we just need to do the same thing for this one go edit profile and again just pick lines pick this lower portion and pick this wall over here so yeah that one now you can delete all of this and just using trim and extend trim and extend everything in place and this here and go finish delete elements and there you go now it's all closed up and now for the hard part let's do the stairs so I'm going to go back to ground level and here we have our staircase so I'm just going to use the align tool to align this wall to this why won't you align okay let's try to do it manually no okay never mind so I'm just going to go stair and I'm going to use this create sketch and because we already have this sketch over here we can use it to create our stair so I'm just going to use this boundary tool first 
So I'm just going to pick this one, this one, this one as well. And then I'm going to pick this middle point. And then let's just offset it by, I don't know, like 10 centimeters. Okay, that's point 0.1. And let's just create an arc over here. Okay, so now we can delete this portion over here. And let's start doing the risers. Now, I like doing risers like this. So you just place them kind of around where they should be. So you just continue placing them. place one here and then these I start from the middle so like this like so and then I can select all of this and mirror it around and now I can just pull this out like so And okay, this looks about right. So I'm just going to do the stair path. And I'm going to do it like this, then an arc. And then just another line. And go finish. And there you go, we have our staircase. So we can delete this over here. We don't really need the railing on the inside and for this railing well let's just go into 3d to see what that looks like okay so here is our staircase so let's hit finish yeah let's delete this railing we don't need it and this one let's change the pipe okay so once that's completed you can select it and let's just copy it up and down so to do that you need to go here to copy paste align with selected levels so I'm just going to go to underground and floor level go OK so it duplicated itself so we just need the basement and we're completed so I'm just going to go to ground level or basically underground and here we have our stair so I'm just going to create a rectangle wall kind of like this okay let's just make it generic 200 and let's create this partition wall over here and let's place a door on it Okay, so once this is completed, we just need the floor, so I'm just going to place a floor over here, like so, and we're done. So now if we go into 3D, okay, this floor is kind of offset because, as you remember, we had to offset this one, so it remembered that height offset, so just change that to zero, and there you go. Okay, so now the house is pretty much completed as far as geometry goes, but if we turn on this to go to realistic, it will look quite, quite dark and ugly. That's because it's using the default material and it's making it gray. So now you can always change the materials and if you're doing some building that needs to be built one day, you need to specify all the layers, but as far as modeling something like this just for practicing and if you want to make it all white, you can just go into the materials, so I'm just going to go here to manage and here I'm going to change the material I'm going to find the default material, so just type in default and this is the material Revit uses by default for all the generic walls and all the generic floors so I'm just going to go here to color and change it to white so this basically changes the color in this view in this realistic view and if we go into appearance and change this to white that will make sure that it renders white when you go and render so I'm just going to go here OK and as you probably remember the real Villa Savoie has this 
dark wall over here and to create that dark wall without much hassle I'm going to use the paint tool. So I'm going to go here to modify, find this paint and here we have basically all the materials. So I'm just going to type in black and let's just use, I don't know, door handle, okay, done. And now we can just pick basically with this paint tool. We can place it, place the paint. So let's door handle, place it there, place it here, this wall as well. So it just places it on the face you select and it makes everything look much better. Okay, so that's, yeah, this one as well, and this one. Yeah, that looks about right, so I'm just going to go here, done. So that's dark, and let's change these columns, and to do that, without much hassle, you just select everything, you go to filter, check none, find structural columns, check them, apply, okay, and then here, just for the structural material, you can change this to something white or let's use our default material. So we have default, go OK and there you go, it's all white. And let's just add some grass, so I'm going to go here to ground level. Now you can use either topography or you can create a floor that's made out of grass. I'm going to be using topography. OK, it says I need to go to site and I'm just going to start placing points. So I'm just going to do four points kinda far apart, like so, just to create something generic. And let's just do basically building pad under the building, so I'm just going to place a building pad like this, go OK. And now if we go into 3D, it looks kinda like this. So we just need to select this and change the material into grass, or plant. I prefer using a plant material. So you just type in grass. For some reason if you type in plant it won't show up. And here we have this plant material. It's kind of lighter and just a better color than the grass material. And go apply, OK. And let's say we're going to have a 3D view going from here. So let's add some side components or basically trees. Let's add some big trees. and. If you kind of have trouble adding the trees, you should probably go into hidden line view. It's a bit easier. So let's add some vegetation here in the back. Make sure it's quite tall so it looks better. Let's add something more. There's nothing high. Okay, this is good. So something like that, maybe here. Okay, that looks nice. So let's just go back into ground level. Go here into camera. Place it like this. And then you need to angle it a bit up. So I'm going to go here to basically just target elevation. And let's move this to, I don't know, 15 meters. Yeah, that looks right. So just change this. This as well and you can always pan the camera around. So yeah, let's place it like that. And now if we try to render this, I'm going to type in double R for render. Let's leave the sun settings at the default. Let's use very few clouds. And let's use, I don't know, screen. And let's go with high. And let's render. And there you go, here we have a realistic rendering of our Villa Savoie in Revit. So of course you can play around, change the garage doors or maybe add the roof garden, add some vegetation in the house and a lot more things. You can always add more detail. But this is it for these basically series on how to model Villa Savoie in Revit. Maybe I'll do a couple more on how to add some details, but this is as far as the general building is concerned, this is it. Thank you for watching all five parts. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, it helps me out a lot. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials, 
leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.